is Holly, and I work for the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, or HIEMA. That was really loud, wasn't it? Do any of you know what it means when you hear that sound? That's right, that's the sound you hear when Hawaii sirens go off. These sirens are part of the Outdoor Siren Warning System for Public Safety, and they're an important component of the Hawaii Alert and Warning System. The sirens operate at 121 decibels. Do you know what a decibel is? Well, for comparison, it's about the same as a thunderclap or a chainsaw, but it's not quite as loud as a military jet aircraft. The sound is loud because we need as many people as possible who live, work, learn, and play in Hawaii to be able to hear them and be notified in case of an emergency. Let's learn a little bit more about these sirens. They're controlled remotely by State Warning Point, which is nestled in Diamond Head Crater. It's not just a cool hike, some really important work goes on right here. The sirens are battery powered, and they're tested once a month to make sure they're working properly. You always know when the first of the month comes in Hawaii to listen for that sound. So here's a tricky question for you. When you hear these sirens, what do you think you're supposed to do? You might be surprised to learn that hearing the sirens doesn't automatically mean evacuate or run. What it actually means is to listen to authorities to find out what you should do next. Sometimes those authorities speak to you through the radio, the television, or wireless text messages. The sirens sound for a variety of different emergencies including earthquakes, hurricanes, brush fires, and tsunamis. Sometimes tsunamis can be hard to predict, so you really want to listen to nature as well. If you feel an earthquake, Drop, cover, and hold on, and then evacuate immediately on foot, inland and higher ground. The same is true if you notice the ocean acting differently. If you hear deep rumbling sounds, or notice it pull away from the shores, evacuate immediately inland, on foot. It's safer that way. Now that you know what a siren sounds like, and a little bit about what they do, here's a perspective that you might be more familiar with. My kids love Minecraft and they think the sirens are pretty fascinating too. So they built sirens all around their creative world. Hmm, <laughs> maybe they think that it'll help keep them safe from creepers, just like they help keep us safe in emergencies. That was so cool. Can you build a siren in your Minecraft world? The next time you hop on a computer or an Xbox, you should try it out. And now I'd like to introduce you to a really special guest. He is the administrator of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency and a Minecraft expert, Luke Myers. Thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit about state emergency management and how we work with the SIREN program and helping public safety here in the state. Now Luke, tell me about the SIRENS. What do they do to help keep people safe? We use the SIREN system to let you know that there's an impending threat or to take action. With a lot of our SIRENS, they're over 10, 20, 30 years old. So as we go to modernize them, we look at each island and we look to kind of rebuild those. On Kauai, we have about 55 sirens. On Oahu, we have about 180. On Maui, across the three islands that make up Maui County, we have 79. And on the big island, we have 94. Have you ever seen them where you work or play or go to school? They're probably close by and you might not even know it. So what we're gonna do and challenge you all with is we're gonna try to leverage technology and science and how preparedness actually works. On a phone, with your parents' permission, we're gonna ask you to download a Survey123 application to help document and learn about where the sirens are. That sounds fun. We're gonna ask for specific pieces of information, including your name, where the siren is, and the school that you're located at. This will help promote a broader awareness of the sirens and how they impact where you live, work, and play. Tsunamis can be very difficult to predict, but we do have some really cool science that helps us in this matter. Luke is going to tell us about the DART system. Thanks, Holly. So we use the DART system, which assesses and reports on tsunamis in the middle of the ring of fire for the state of Hawaii. This map over here shows you a number of the buoys that are used. So whether we have an earthquake in Japan, in the Gulf of Alaska, or way down by South of America, when the earth shakes, these buoys register a change in the sea level. That information is sent back to Hawaii and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. 
they analyze that information and they make a determination if a tsunami wave is coming our way. The more prepared we are, the better our state stays safe. For the DART system over here on our big flat screen television for you all at home, <laughs> we have a animation of not only where our dark buoys are, but the potential information on each of those buoys. Here we can actually zoom in and see where the state of Hawaii is. And if we do have an earthquake, whether it's over here in the South America continent or up here in the Pacific Northwest or in Japan, we can actually see how the dart buoys are actually being impacted. We not only have the dart buoys, we have tidal gauges. This will let us know how big the waves may be, let's say in Hilo Harbor, in Honolulu, or on the North Shore of a given area. I actually don't know how good he is at Minecraft, but it is clear that he cares about the residents and visitors to Hawaii and keeping them safe from tsunamis and other emergencies. Luke, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate the opportunity. We challenge you all to know your hazards where you live, work, and play, and be prepared.